She's hungry. But it's almost dinner time, sort of. Not really. I don't care. Is it? I don't know. What? Nothing. What? Just sitting here. It's Friday. We got off to a late start. Today was a busy day. Well, every day is a busy day. Well, today was a busy day for me. Most of the days I can just sit downstairs under my tanning lamp and with my pina colada and just get my toes done and relax, but not today. We got to talk to the doctor. It was lots of fun. Not me, Sebastian had his annual checkup. Oh God, and we got flu shots, which means I got a flu shot. Oh, which means you're gonna get sick. No, I, I don't get sick. I always get a terrible, terrible reaction to the flu shot. So that's gonna kind of screw our weekend if that happens. Hopefully not. But it's not like we go anywhere. No. <gasps> Milo. All right, we've got sort of a short-ish show for you, but it's kind of late in the day and it's been a big day. So we got stuff to do and I'm being licked. By cat, obviously not me. <laughs> you can see her face. She's right there. Um, <laughs> well, let's do a uh, wrist check. Okay, I'm going to go first because Sabrina's busy explaining uh, the gold rush of 1849 to somebody. 1846. 1846. Wait, but 46? 49? 49. 49, 49, yeah, 49ers. <laughs> anyway, so this, I am wearing, this is a 6139 7010. Or 7011, they also, that that one also. I, I redid one of these for a longtime customer. And uh, I was really sort of inspired. Um, I, this one came to me like over a decade ago, smashed and in pieces. Um, tacky ring was missing. Hands were missing. Dial was marked up and you can see the dial still has some marks on it, but I decided after I did work on his, I'm like, I, this was one of my favorite models. And so I decided to build one. And so I finally had enough parts cause, uh, I had another watch that came in. That was another junker that had this tacky ring. And so I was able to, I, I, I had everything. So this is, this is a JDM movement with a can't see it, but it's a kanji English day wheel, but I didn't have the right case back for it. So what I did is I sterilized a Seiko like modern 7S dress watch. They use the same threading and everything. I sterilized the glass, cleaned all the Seiko text from the previous model off of it and put it on there and it, it runs beautifully. And you can see, you can see the red text on that movement. Isn't that neat? Very happy with it. It's very cool. And the nice thing is too, of course, is that you can, you can see all the action, which is super cool. All right. I'm standing. Hang on. I got to reset. So now you can see in the other button, there's the hammer going click. Isn't that neat? Okay. I'm very happy to have one of these again. I am wearing something that you wound. Oh, are you wearing the Bulova? Where am I? Where am I? There I am. That's such a Ugh. cool skin diver. This thing is up so high. I'm so used to it being lower. We got a new holder thingy. I love this Bulova skin diver. It's just so cool. And that's the original loom and everything. I, I just, it's... One of these things where I wish there was this exact model at 40 millimeters. I'd never stop wearing it. Hmm. Anyway, I'm glad you're wearing that. Mm -hmm. Sebastian was the one who found it. It was underneath the dresser. Hmm. All right. Well, and, but anyway. Look at that little dude ride his bike. Yeah, look, he's not even riding training wheels. God, he's smaller than Sebastian. Look at him chugging along. Willow can't ride a bike. It's a miracle city. We don't, we're not big on bike riding, so. I, I don't know. I rode bikes exclusively I am for not years big and years on and years. I bike riding because I'll fall off. I don't have to go anywhere now, so I don't ride. Though we do have bicycles. Mm -hmm. That last ride home when I was hauling that, the, the bicycle, the, 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 the baby trailer on the, and it was, the wind was right against <laughs> us. That was it. That was it. I don't know what we were thinking. That we wanted to be. Happy fun Fort Collins people. We tried really hard. Didn't work out. No. Anyway, okay, so let's let's kick off. What? Nothing. What? Nothing. 
Sorry, we're having multiple crises today. What, Milo? He's doing that thing. Because he wants attention. Scritchy scratchy. Okay, let's do it. John Boy of Alaska. Don't glare at me. I didn't do it. Yeah, right. Come on, Spencer. You're married. You always did it, even if you didn't. It took me five years of marriage to learn that, but you're only saying greed is to blame the toddler, but whatever whales... Can I at least have the questions? Hey, I almost caught those. <laughs> Whatever whales you, LOL. Keep having fun. I love your Friday nights. Uh, our Friday nights are busy. Um, <laughs> yeah, well, you know, marriage is a, a dance, and it is what it is. What are you glaring at me for? I didn't do it. Yes, you did. I didn't even... everybody to troll me about it. I didn't even see this. I just I just copied and pasted it. Okay, let's rock on. Ow. <laughs> Luis R. It's only a matter of time before the how do you pronounce Redune? Redune? I don't know. Redune makes a sixty-one fifty-nine seven thousand. Imagine that watch for two hundred dollars. They're gonna do it. I bet you. Well, I mean, now I, because you said it and they're watching and they're like, hey, on his channel, there's an interest, so we're going to make it. Well, you know, the thing is, though, is that they, I mean, they're doing some good stuff and that's fine. But I've been talking to Steve Laughlin at Raven Watches. I actually, Steve, if you're watching, I need to call you. Problem is, I hate being on live calls. Hate it. I, I can do it. I'm just, I'm really resistant to it and I need to call and speak because it'd be a, a good first step in doing this even though i'll he, remind him i didn't know this was a thing it was my idea and steve laughlin was like hey that's a great idea we should do that and then and he was like well we should we'd talk and we we're gonna do but they're moving offices this week so i don't know if he's gonna have time this week but i have to set up a call with him but yes redune may do it uh but um you know we'll see what happens you look fine Look at me. Look. I, I look like I, I, I look like an embarrassed potato with lint on my head. Also part of the problem is my teeth. What about them? You've got lovely new braces thing. No, they they put these faces in my Why? So So what's... when I get my jaw dealt with it'll make sure it's in the right place. So I have these giant gaps in my teeth. Sorry, she's feeling self conscious today. And I have to look at myself. I am not fishing for compliments. Okay. I'll just go like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I could get you the, the the I could get you the mask. I need a Mandalorian helmet. That's what I need. I've wanted one for well, I wanted a Boba Fett helmet for a really long time. And back when the sharper image still existed, they sold one that was like supposedly awesome. I want a awesome. Mando helmet for when I'm feeling self conscious. And then okay. we can go back to Costco and get that Baby Yoda. Oh, my God. I saw somebody had a Baby Yoda, with, and they put their scrunchies on his ears. Really? They're like, it's my new scrunchie holder. That's awesome. <laughs> Troy Nacello. Hey there, guys. Hope all is well. Spencer, I was wondering if you could explain, or better yet, demonstrate how to change a crystal in a 6139, 7020, or similar models. I have no problems changing a crystal on a modern Seiko, such as an SKX007, but these older ones are different, I'm sure. Do I need a new gasket? And if so, do you sell them when you sell the new crystal? Thanks for any help. Stay cool. Um, I'll, I'll, we'll break and I, I, I could talk about it, but I'll just show. Okay. So talking about doing a crystal. So this, this one is out of my junk drawers. Obviously it has the wrong crystal in it. This is some kind of plastic internally faceted thing. It's supposed to look more like this, which is one of our crystals. I've already changed the crystal on this one. I was thinking about restoring this watch. That's original, believe it or not. Really early one. Proof, 23 jewels. Yeah, with a neat UFO. Isn't that cool? So anyway, the way that you redo these kind of things, well, first we're going to look for the sort of the fingernail cutout of this bezel. Is that in there? Yeah, it's right there. See that little half moon cutout right there? So you get your handy dandy Seiko case knife. Seiko. You put that in there. 
Come on. I'm doing this far away. Hang on a second. That's definitely it. Oh, wow, this does not want to come out. I picked a dumb one. Hang on. Wow. Holy cow. Get off. Well, that one is stuck on there. Hang on. Okay, okay. I think I got it. When I see watches like this that have clearly incorrect crystals in there, I usually see some funky stuff. Did I get that out or not? Get out. Hang on. Okay. Yeah, usually when I find this, it's we sort of jacked up. There we go. Okay, so bezel is off. What did they do? Okay. Okay, so what did they do? Okay, you've still got good. Sometimes you see stuff like this, and they've done all kinds of silliness to put the wrong crystal in, which we don't want. So hang on one second for me. Get that out. There we go. Okay, you asked about crystal seals. Seiko's guidance, according to the service manual, is that unless these gaskets are made of Viton, as a result, they don't oxidize. And they're pretty chemically resistant, and you can see this is, despite being many decades old, is in great shape. Seiko's guidance on these L gaskets is to rinse these in alcohol, allow it to air dry and reuse. Some people will say, well, you're not supposed to grease these, no silicon grease. That's actually not true. Seiko's guidance, according to the thing, is especially on the outside, right in this little divot right here, you should have a little bit of a very fine layer of lubrication. So for fun, let's just, not a lot, just, just a hair, just a tiny amount, teeny tiny itty bitty amount. And it's also important to do that because it really, really, really aids in um, putting the, uh, the crystal itself back in. Hang on a second. So, okay, we've got this here. Darn it, where are they? Where did I put them? Ouch, I just got shocked. Uh, God damn it. Sorry, bad language again. Okay, let's use this set. Okay, here we are. So... Okay, so there that is. So obviously I'm not really being good about this. This I haven't cleaned this seal, I haven't cleaned the watch, I haven't done anything. I'm just I'm just being a jerk and doing this just to show you. So you tuck that in. You, it should be slightly larger than the case itself. You should have to try to work to sort of tuck it in, right? Because you want it to That's a pretty good ring. Huh, look at that. That indicator ring's in nice shape. Oh, look at that. It's got a complete stem, too. 21 jewels. Yeah, it's a 6119. Something's not happy, though. Handset's pretty good. Even if the loom is bad, the actually, the, the metal is really nice. I can reloom that. That's not bad. And this yellow, I can tint that back to orange, and that looks pretty good. Oh, huh, this could be a pretty decent watch, actually. Okay, well, anyway, I'm screwing up here. Um, okay, so here is a used crystal, because I'm not going to put a brand new crystal on this. This is a, a used, a good used crystal that I have sequestered away. Uh, oh, except, of course, I'm a Dingleberry, and this is a 340, and I'm supposed to put in a 330. This is what you get for not preparing. So, let me get a used 330 W16GA00. You know, I was going to go and start digging through all my stuff to find a used 330 W16, but 
if I actually do make good on my threat to restore this watch, I'm going to have to use a new crystal anyway, so here one is. There that is. So there you can see it sits right on top. But now the next thing is we've got to get this to sit in nicely. So you want to, with these, there's always the, the urge to want to try to push it sideways to get it to drop in. You should basically only push straight down. I push straight down and I rub my, God, and I rub my, I, I go back and forth like this. I'm just trying to work it in. You don't ever want to like try to really get it in, like really pushing sideways. Because what'll happen is that it'll stop holding over here and the whole crystal will skip out and it'll take the hands off. Ugh, Will is having a meltdown. Anyway, so there you see we have the crystal now is sat down nice and evenly into that L gasket. You can see that the frosted edge is all taken. You can see that the you can see that the, the surface, the top of the L gasket is sitting in. Now look, that's a little high right over there. See, so we've got to, we've got to get that in and it, it wants to come back up. It should not want to come back up. You want it seated down nice and firmly. So it shouldn't be trying to pop out. Because it's one of these things where, you know, you're trying to put this on here and then you're trying to snap the ring back on and it won't go. It won't go. And if you ever have it where it's like it's just fighting you and it won't go, what you've got to do is check to make sure that that crystal is not coming up on any side. Okay? So then we have this glue-filled monstrosity. God. What the heck were they thinking? So we got that, and now, okay. Whoever put that plastic crystal in used a ton of glue on this, so I'm not gonna try to snap this on top of the crystal. Plus that's a little warped. Um, let me find There's a right place and a wrong place for glue. Um, ugh. Okay, let me find a, a bezel or clean this one. Okay, unless I do some real digging, I'm not gonna find it. So not that I really want to do things quick and dirty, but. Come on. This is a junk screwdriver, by the way. You, I, I, I rework them with sharp, flat plain blade so they're kind of like a chisel and then it helps me get in and get this stuff out of here glue there's a time and a place for glue you shouldn't have to do this this nonsense can you believe that you're spending your friday evening and or saturday morning watching me clean the inst glue off the inside of a bezel I apologize. I should have dancing girls or something. Make it more entertaining for you folks. Yikes. Wow. Actually, it's not bad. This is, I think this watch is one of those ones where it looks terrible at first glance and then you start looking at it and you're like, hey, wait, this ain't bad. Yeah, it's just got glue all over it. Okay, well, screw it. Okay, so we've sat down our crystal. It is nice where it's supposed to be. We are going to pretend that this bezel is as it ought to be. The finger cutout should go up at the top. Sometimes they go over here in the side, but I always like to have them up top. Like, like centered perfectly. That's where we want. And then you get your handy dandy B and B press. Splunk, and there it is. It snaps into place. And that is the way that it's done. Maybe I'll restore this one this weekend, huh? Case back is nice. 
cases original lines. Not only bad if I clean up the I clean up that loom. Come on. I want to look at that movement. Yeah, that's pretty nice. Maybe this is the one I'll do this weekend. Okay, there we go. Hey, look at that. Look at that. And look. See, that's those square sides of the, uh, that's the, the square sides of the, of the bridges here, this early type. And so that's what, February 73. Hey, that's a nice looking movement. And it's got some servicing marks in there too. Somebody liked this watch and they took care of it. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe. Maybe. Cool. Maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll see what I can do. Okay. Anyway, that's how you put a crystal in. Anyway, so it's the same basic process. The most challenging thing is to make sure you get that crystal firmly seated down and that when you're firmly slowly and gently seeding that crystal that you're not pushing sideways because if you, those things can slip and you're building up a lot of pressure when you're trying to push that thing sideways and it can scythe the dial clean of hands and you don't you don't want to do that you just upset the cat road gent question hi both could you do a video just on the qt99 what's that oh your thingy my quartz tester do you have okay frig do you have to maintain it yourself, calibration, etc.? I find the QT bits of your videos as equally interesting as the rest of your work. Best regards. Uh, the QT99 is a lovely piece of kit, as they say, uh, back in old Blighty. Um, mine works very well. It's sort of a two-part unit. You have the entire base that has all the calculations, and then you have the um, the microphone, which is a multifunction microphone. My that microphone is a little twitchy, and so I've cleaned it. I've cleaned it. Uh, I've I've cleaned all the connections. I've done my absolute best to make sure that everything is attached. Certain functions on it are kind of wacky, and if I like were to try, to try to, I've done this in the past. You try to use it for doing like an LCD or something that's like this, and it is real hit or miss. And then uh, it'll get really, it'll get pissed off. And you have to like kind of cajole it and jolly it along to get it to do other stuff as it should. I've actually been considering buying a modern quartz twister uh, because like with a lot of these technologies, they're not, you know, older is not necessarily better. Like, you know, the old time graphers with their rolls of paper tape, nobody uses those things anymore. The, God, well, that would get messy. Yeah, and it's just, well, it's because what you do is you would, it would literally roll out this like old school paper receipt tape. And then you would, uh, you would include that with the, um, uh, when you return to watch the customer sometimes. Why do you know about this? Uh, it's an old school watch thing. I, I know. Where'd you read about it? I don't remember. I've never heard about it. I don't remember. Probably either the Watch Horology subreddit or maybe NAWCC. Um, their, their, their discussion boards. I don't remember. Mm. Oh, also the Seiko guides actually have pictures of different tapes of, of different outputs. And they tell you what the signals mean, mm. which is actually really cool. You're looking through it and it's like, there's one and it's like this double line and it's going, and they're like, I looked at it and I was like, and you look at the explanation, it's that you've got a wheel that's bent and it's intermittently touching. Hmm. And so you're, and it's, it's just one of the next great things they've got. What is his problem? I don't know. He's an unsatisfied cat. Carlo Pro Patriarca. Patriarcha. I hope I said that right. I have a Seiko 6139 6010 is worth to fix it. Someone told me it cannot be repaired. Do you think it's possible if I move it, it works for a few seconds? I'd have to see it. Well, yeah, sure. Absolutely. Of course it's worth, um, of course it's worth working on. That can be kind of a collectible model. 
um, depending on which variant you have. If you um, if you want to email me a picture of it, I can definitely look at it. But yeah, it's unless it's really been hideously damaged with like water and sun and stuff like that, it's it's going to be something that can be repaired. Whether it's worth it is up to you. It's raining. It depends how <laughs> damaged it is. Well, now I can't read the questions. God, Milo. <laughs> Steve Jones. <laughs> my cat hurt my nose. I went to high school with not one, but two Steve Joneses. The straight edge is actually closer to <sighs> correct as the bevel plates phased out 12 months earlier on the 6105 at the same time that the horseshoe back disappeared. Okay, that's really interesting. I've never heard that before. Um, I've, myself, I'd like to think I'm pretty observant. I've never noticed a correlation between the, 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 I'm sorry, people. He is talking about an older comment that I made about in the 6,000 series movements, like 6105, 6106, 6119, blah, 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 blah. Um, the plates, like the train, the edge of the train bridge and the edge of the balance cock, in, in there's two variants. One is they're just square edge like this. And then there's another one where they're actually, it's beveled off around it. Um, in any case, so Mr. Jones, I, I, I'd love to know more about that. Um, if you have any source material for me, I'd love to know about it. I've never noticed myself any rhyme or reason about why you have one has this edge or that edge beveled or straight. I've never correlated between the straight casebacks and the horseshoe casebacks having any connection. And I'm not saying that they don't. It's just I've never heard of that before. Uh, so if you have any source material for that, please, 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 I would like very much to see it. Life is so busy. Is it? Well, the Willow's teacher... Laura is a douche. She's awesome, but God! Well, it's because they're at home. They don't have to deal with their classrooms and yeah. all, all that stuff. But they still want to do a good job. No, I know. It's just a lot to read, but I have the whole weekend, too. Ugh, Milo, your fur is up my nose. <coughs> Luis R. Hey, Spencer, what are Sabrina's thoughts on the 2A220170? I have no idea. Seems like it would fit her wrist well. I'm guessing it's small. I have an NOS example and the beveling, sweeping crown guards and lines between brushed area polished surfaces makes for an attractive case design. Yeah, it's the it's. What am I looking at? You're looking at this. It's a lady. It's basically it's mm, the. I know what it is. It's the yeah. It's the equivalent of the 6105, but for ladies. It's very cute. It is cute. I wish it weren't cute. I love... I wish it weren't cute. Well, it's cute, small. Cute, cute means small. I wish that this was a man-sized watch. It is... I mean, like the 6105-8110 with its beautiful asymmetric case and curving crown guards and everything, this is very much like it. It's got the, it's got the high applied markers. It's got the, the deep loom. It's got a 6159 style handset. Uh, it's a high beat movement, a hand winder. This thing is awesome, but it's tiny. If it... <laughs> the cat is just going tap, 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 tap. Um, I wish, I deeply, deeply wish that this was available in a man's size. Now, Steve Laughlin from Raven Watches has, uh, has recreated a watch that is very similar to this in terms of case style, and I keep meaning to get one so I can look at it in person. Um, and as, and again, Steve, if you're watching, I have again failed you. <clears throat> Someday I'll stop failing people. You don't fail me. What? You took a little dude to the doctor so I didn't have to. You're petting the cat. <laughs> and I got you those pizzas you wanted. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Abu Darda. Hi guys, I'm wondering, is 7548 quartz and 6309 movement still easy, easy to, easily to maintain and service in today's market? I do like those vintage watches, but I'm scared it might break the bank more than I enjoy the watch, since it is considered as vintage. Your point of view or experience would be much appreciated. Well, howdy. Um, both models, 
the 7548, seven, which is 754X. They were 7545, 7546, 7548, 7549, blah, 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 7559. Um, there are a couple of those variants of it. And the 6309s, they shouldn't, in terms of parts availability and spares, Seiko, the great thing about both things is that Seiko made a bajillion of them as dress watches. And so you can get a 7646, 7546, um, or a 6309 dress watch, and it's the same exact thing under the hood. It's the same movement, it's all the parts are the same, and so no, they're, they're not only extremely well built, but it should be possible to find you know, movements that can be serviced and replaced or parts well beyond my lifetime. So, yeah, absolutely. Go for it. He just keeps looking at you with, like, the most loving look on his face. Does he? Yes. Uh, Milo. I can I? I don't know. Joseph Stewart. These 754A overhaul videos are always my favorite videos to watch. Sorry, I'm so tired. As usual, I think you guys are used to it by now. <sighs> it's such a gorgeous movement. There is just something so satisfying about knowing another one of these babies is getting that life-changing jewel insert for the hand stack. Yeah, it's really cool. And if Seiko had done that from the get-go, I mean, they'd be unkillable. What would be even better? If they had come up with a way to isolate the battery from the rest of the movement... So that if there was a battery leak, the acid wouldn't touch the movement or the dial. God, wouldn't that be neat? I can't think of a single watch that did that. Because it's one of the dangers for those things, is that you have a leaking battery. That'd be bananas. Literally to have the power cell completely divorced, completely separated, a physical break from the, from the wall with just wire connections one to the other. That'd be pretty neat. Yeah, they're, they're awesome watches. They're awesome. What? Ow. Cat. Where was I? I don't know. You're in the, you're you're here in the big room. Really? I have a cat on me. Michael Sands, another great video. Thanks. Question for Friday. I was wondering if you have any tips, tricks for perfectly aligning the seconds hand on these so it hits the don't fall off me. It hits the index marks perfectly when the watch is running. I haven't mastered that yet. Thanks. Um well, I did. Uh, I did a seven five four eight uh, earlier, in, way back in the week, um, and you know, you'd think I'd be able to do a one shot, one go, but every single one of them is ever so slightly different. Okay, you go and you, you've got the movement. You have the stem in, and you pulled out the crown. It's the hacking point, so it's hacking. And so I always drop the hand on to align with midnight. The problem is, is that. Then you push the crown in. Sometimes that hand, when you push the crown in, because it's being hacked, sometimes the crown will go, or the handle will go back slightly from where you set it. Sometimes it'll go a little bit forward from where you set it. Sometimes it'll be off, and then once it kind of gets its rhythm, it'll start being aligned. The one on Monday, Tuesday, or whenever that was, I had to do, I had to reset that hand, gosh, like six times, and it's amazing. And I set it back every single time and despite the fact putting it in different orientations every single time the hand was ever so slightly past the markers i just had to do it and do it and do it and do it and then i sit there and i watch it once i get it and i think it looks good i sit there and i watch it as it hits um the real diagnostic for me is if it hits at perfect 45 perfect 30 perfect 45 i'm sorry perfect 15 perfect 30 perfect 30, 45 and then when it comes back around to top dead center that it's right on the marker and once i do that then it's good to go hi hi what's going on i'm wondering how much a mando helmet is just because i think if you well it depends do you do you want to waste money on kind of a crappy one or do you want to get a a nice one uh, I, I don't know well you can get you they have you can get this there's a there's a couple studios that are making mando helmets that are being made from the original molds. That'd be cool. And they had they have one of the screen used helmets and they have they have artists basically and they're they're painting it to with the original right there 
to match it perfectly. It's exactly yeah, how the, much is that? They're like three hundred bucks. I guess I know what I want for Christmas. Um, but yeah, no, they're <laughs> literally they're off the same molds. They're 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 the highest possible quality. It's it's not like cheap plastic like something you'd get in like the Halloween store, um, and they're all hand painted. You can get shitty ones. You can get. I'll have to bleep that out. Uh, you, you can get <laughs> junky ones. Junky ones for not a lot of money, but it's just it's a waste. Might as well get something good. What? But you don't want a fancy helmet like the armor, because she's all girly. No, I want a Mando helmet. Ham and Nasseron. Hello, Spencer. I have a. A prob like a problem like you said when I test my watch six R three five in crown position down I can see my balance become slower and within one hour um, becomes stop how can I solve that problem hope you have a solution thanks my watch Alpinist twenty twenty six R three five green dial um so my first question is is this the watch at full power um. Second question is, when you're wearing the watch, does it keep decent time? Like, decent, decent time. Like, good, good time. Um, and does will that balance in crown down position, you say it stops. Like, it stops. Um, get the watch up to full power. And that's the first thing I do, is get the watch up to full power and confirm that even at full power, the cr being crowned down, the, the balance stops because then that gives you more of an idea of what to look at. The problem with these watches, again, my personal feeling, these movements, is that they have QC issues, but they also have that, they have that hairspring and the balances are just really, really finicky. And they, they can be temperamental. Um, what? Oh, the helmets are like $750, and a person posted it on a website called This Is Why I'm Broke. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder if there's a sub called that. Probably. Um, in any case, the first thing to do is to narrow down the cause. Uh, I suspect it's probably the usual 4R, 6R, 15 problem with the balances and the hairsprings. The fact that you have so many variants that can be done on those hairsprings. I don't know. It's just, it's honestly, it's the point. It's like you just throw your hands up. You're just like, I don't even know what to say because the issues have been so consistently inconsistent for so long. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I it, It's depressing, isn't it? I think it's depressing. But Milo's never depressed. He's a happy cat. Mm hmm Troy Nacello, another question. Why don't you jewel the upper arbor bushing on the 6,000 movements? There's an Australian guy in Canada called the Seikoologist that makes videos and his shop jewels both bottom and top part, ports. Just wondering, is it just not necessary? Thanks. It's not as necessary. It's definitely, it's not a bad, it, it's definitely, it's a good idea then to Then why have. don't you do it? Uh, because we would have to put in a special order with, um, the company that makes our lower ones and uh, they have the specs. I mean, I could just put in an order. I could call them on Monday and have them made uh, if I want to drop that kind of cash on that stuff. But it's a pretty large additional expense. Um, also, the, the reason that those things, you have the upper bushing, which is a nice piece of like steel. It's not brass. It's, it's much harder. Um, and then the problem with them is that the lower mainspring arbor port, if you have your, if you... What? What are you doing? Okay. Here is your mainspring arbor. This is inside the giant barrel, and the mainspring is wrapped around it, okay? So here's your upper bushing. This is where the ratchet is that gets turned by the automatic weight. And this is your lower mainspring arbor right down there, sitting in the bushing. So this is in hardened steel bushing, which is pretty durable. Um, and they tend to last pretty well. The problem with them is that all the gearing that, that is pushing the power into the center wheel is down here. So you have all this power being pushed on a s much smaller surface area because remember, the upper one is pretty big. You got a lot of surface area up there. This one's much smaller, and it's it's the stainless steel mainspring arbor Ow. sitting in naked brass. And brass is pretty soft. And the force and the push and the pressure is down here, 
pushing it sideways. So these upper ones, they get worn mostly because the lower one gets ovaled out and starts tipping. As, it, as, it, as this thing turns and grinds, turns and grinds, turns and grinds, you get this thing where the upper one gets jacked up because the lower one is all ovaled out and the whole thing is tipping over. Typically, typically, you rejewel the lower, you put it back in straight like this, and you'll find that the upper one is typically fine. Um, I've considered doing it. Um, I'd like to have them. Another thing to consider, though, too, is that there's a... What was that? What the hell was that? <laughs> he was freaked out by something. And he sidestepped. Um, jewels... I don't know. Uh, there's something to be said for metal bushings. Um, in certain situations, that one, it's, it's pretty durable. And if you don't whack it, it, it shouldn't... Those big upper jewels are the only ones I've ever seen that break in a 6159. Um, not very often, but I have seen it. One thing about a steel bushing is it will not break and it can be repaired. Um, there's no, I mean, at a certain point for the lower mainspring arbors, I considered replicating a Seiko part, which is like that jewel, except it's made of that same steel. Um, and that would, I mean, and they made them and they use them. They use them in the 5126s have them. Um, I don't know. I, I, I do repairs as I feel that they are necessary. I'm not, and I understand the idea of going with full jewels and I guess I should just call up Brad and be like, Hey man, if you still got that stuff. What? I wasn't listening. Sorry. I... <laughs> It doesn't matter. You well, no, care. I'm like, should I tell them what the gold rush thing was? Do they care? <laughs> I keep looking to see if people respond. It's a pretty simple concept about the 1849 gold rush. Okay, 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 hold on. Let me get this. Hang on. Me... Wait, were you done explaining things? Yeah, more or less. Um, I, I guess I kept thinking about it. I'm like, it's rare for me to run into a situation where the upper bushing is destroyed. I, I, have, I have not really seen that. Typically the upper bushings are fine. Uh, they might show a little wear, but it's mostly associated with that tipping over. Um, and you can, you can actually pull that bushing. It's just a friction fit. You can pull the bushing and you turn it 180 degrees. And then what that means is that the face that you're using is completely unworn because those arbors, they push against only one side. So if you turn it around, you put it on the other side, flip it around, it's, it's just going to sit there in the brand new area of the bushing that's never been worn and you're going to get, and it's going to be, it's going to be fine. Uh, and you don't have to worry about anything else. My big thing is longevity. I just, I want the watches to run for a long time. Okay. You were talking about 1849. Okay. Can you hold this in front of, I'm shaky. So let people read this. Okay. So this is an Instagram post. Uh, let's see if I can do it on here. Okay, so you read what that person said and then go up so they can see the picture. So that's a fake airplane set that these influencers on Instagram are renting out so that these influencers can say, aren't I cool, look at me jetting around the world, when in fact they're sitting in a warehouse in Glendale. Right, so I said that it's like the people who were selling shovels and pickaxes to the miners because typically the miners didn't make a lot of money. They had dreams of making money and then it This is work. the 1849 gold rush in California. Right, for people that aren't American. So there was, in California, there was lots of people. Sutter's who, Mill. Yeah, and they were, the people found gold and they came back to the East Coast in the middle of the country like, gold, gold in California, oh my God. And everybody, everybody bolted. I don't know if people know about this. One of, there's some famous photographs of San Francisco at that time, the harbor. So many people were coming for the gold rush. Everyone was coming. The entire harbor around San Francisco, which is, uh, uh, was completely filled full of abandoned sailing ships because they would come having been chartered by people to get to California for the 1849 gold rush and everybody would head for the hills to dig for gold, including the crew and the captain. They would just leave. <laughs> and so um, the, the entire sort of tidal flats to the west of San Francisco were filled with all these rotten ships 
And then somebody got the brilliant idea that you could apparently claim the piece of land that your ship was on if you owned it. So all the ships that were sunk were filled in over with dirt, and they're still there to this day. Anyway, so you had those people go, and then you had the other people who were like, Oh, I can sell shovels and pickaxes at a markup, and I'm going to sell to these people, and it's going to be awesome. And Shovel was $8 in 1849. I don't even that's I don't even know how much money that was. So they made lots of money and I'm saying that with the whole warehouse airplane thing that the people who have the set are like the people selling the shovels and the pickaxes while the influencer wannabes are like the the gold miners trying to. Right. So the influencer wannabes are shelling out money to the people who own the studio and trying to hope that they're going to be the next big thing whereas the people with the studio are like they get, they're getting steady paychecks. Mm -hmm. They're the ones who are making the money. So, that's what, that's the thing with the stuff. Where are the side? This is a wartime silver nickel. I know we have them in there. I know, well, no, this one specifically is a silver. It has the big mint mark. Hmm. San Francisco, S. That's full of wheatback pennies, if anybody cares. Yeah, this is all wheatback pennies. RG, hi SNS. My 7002 needs a new bearing for the oscillating weight, and I can't find one. Will the 7SXX bearing fit? What's currently on your Seiko and non Seiko watches wish list? Thanks and happy Friday. Uh, firstly, you can swap. Yeah, this a uh, 7S weight will drop right onto your 7002. Don't try to swap out just the bearings. They're they're you can do it, but it's. Just swap out the entire weight, and you can find them. That's easy. Unscrew one, screw the other one in place, and <sighs> Bob is your parent's brother. Mm -hmm. Bob's your uncle. Everything's fine. Uh, and what was the last part of his question? Seiko and non-Seiko watches wish list. I don't, know. I don't have one. Watches happen. I want a Teutonic Omega Speedmaster. They're hard to find. It's the last generation of the old school Speedmasters. It was only for the German market. They have a really kind of cool sort of almost, um, uh, they have an 80 style sort of swoopy case, but it's in a satin finish. They just, they look really cool. Uh, I, I just think it'd be pretty neat to get my hands on one of those. Um, I don't know. I can't really think of anything else right now. I mean, I'm sure something will occur to me, but nothing right now. Sam D, can you suggest a stainless steel 6139 case that the dial and hands from a 6015? Six, yeah, that's the gold watch. So he's oh, acting with the would six... look good in. Um, oh, Sebastian. Sebastian, we're almost done. Well, you know, there's, there's, you can use the stainless steel case from that same series. Uh, it's the same exact case. Everything bolts together. I was actually, I have one. I was going to fiddle around with it and see, I wish I were a real machinist. If I were a real machinist, I would make a case out of something neat. Um, aluminum bronze, which is a great marine material. Um, That'd be pretty awesome. There's got to be, or imagine like a gray sort of satin finished titanium. If you knew how to do this stuff, that'd be really cool. Hey, the mail. Mail already came. Well, is there more mail? That's that, not our mail. There was no mail. Willow went to go get the, am I living in fantasy land? Well, if you said there's no mail and there's the mail truck. Well, no, the mail stopped at the house. And Willow went out to get the mail. And there was nothing there. And there was nothing there. So what's this person doing? I don't know. Delivering something to Tom. I should go throw pennies at them. You mean. Uh, John Cunningham. Spencer! Exclamation point. Do you use a mainspring winder to reinstall the spring back in the barrel? There seems to be a mixed school of thought about this. I don't know. I'm not aware of any mixed thoughts. At the very, very, very beginning, way back in the day, I did not have mainspring winders that worked very well, and so I tended to... I remember that. Right. I tended to... <laughs> to I, I, for At the very beginning, before I was doing this, I was doing this only as a hobby, um, and I, you can you can install a mainspring with your thumbs, but it also... it um, Oh, they're going away. Told you. But it also... You don't want to do that. You want the, the mainspring always to be in plane, to be straight. Um, so yeah, I use a mainspring winder. I have a, a couple of sets 
Uh, I most typically I use a, a K and D set, uh, vintage old that came from my guy here in town. Sebastian's giving me the thumbs up. Cause he's stealing your rocks. Ooh, that's a trilobite. That's a trilobite. I thought we lost that. No. I thought I thought Sadie brought it to show and tell in preschool and lost it. Well, there it is. Oh, I felt bad for years and I didn't have to. Yeah. Well, you can go and show it to her. I don't think she remembers. Wow, what is this? That's the topic of this thing. If I was, if it wasn't full of pennies and I was going to make a cocktail, this is what I would use. Vodka Collins, Bloody Mary, Highball, Whiskey Sour, Martini, Gin and Tonic, Old Fashioned, Manhattan, Daiquiri, Bacardi, Tom Collins, and On the Rocks. Uh, on the Rocks is one finger liquor, two to three ice cubes, pour over cubes, surf. Then why would you put it in? Who knows? <laughs> I've had this for so long. I found this at a thrift store in San Francisco in the early 90s. This probably came from Community Thrift. Mm -hmm. I'd have to say. I don't even know what a Tom Collins is. I don't think I ever had one. Hey. One jigger gin, juice of one lemon, one teaspoon sugar, shake with ice, add soda. Hey. I don't know what that would taste like. No. Hey, guys, what is that? That's a rock. What yeah. the... One, uh, so here's the Bacardi. One jigger rum, juice of one lime, two dashes grenadine. Nobody carries that anymore. Shake well with ice, strain and serve. Why would they have grenadine? Isn't that in a Shirley Temple? Yeah, no, grenadine is like that weird, like cherry syrup yeah, thing. Yeah, it's I in Shirley Temple. Highball. One jigger liquor, soda or water, pour into glass, add ice and mix. Add ice and mixer, stir and ser serve. Gin and tonic? How, why would you need a recipe for gin and tonic? One cup gin, one cup tonic. <laughs> and off you go. Oh <laughs> one jigger gin, Indian quinine water, pour gin and ice, slice lemon or lime. What were they thinking? Uh, add, add mixer, serve. Are you going to just read them all to them? Well, you like whiskey sours. I do. No, I'm not going to read them all. Thank you. Okay. Can I share with this car? Sure, yes. why not? Now we have one more thing to One read. more question, so hang on. From Nacho Valenti, another enjoyable video and beautiful watch. Oh, thank you. Like, Nacho Valenti. Like, oh, he's talking about the, the gold 6139-6015. The watches? The watches. <laughs> Yeah, watches. <laughs> yes, but you have to stop talking. Um, yeah, it's it's a very cool watch. I wish there was a way to deal with... Seiko had another way to deal with base... What are you doing? <laughs> watches. Watches. She, for some reason... Okay, last night I was kind of... <laughs> Loopy? I was a little loopy. And I had to put up a picture. There were the watches sitting next to me on the table at the end of the day and after dinner. And normally he types like this giant thing. And I was looking at them and I was pretty tired and I was just like, watches. And she, for some reason, thinks it's hilarious. Yeah, but then he posted a watch today and he copy and pasted for the other one and it says watches on it. <laughs> what are you going to do? I just... I, I'm just, I'm I'm held together with duct tape and rotten string and those old rubber bands that they kind of start coming to pieces and stuff. That's what's inside my head. And that's, I'm, I just, just be grateful you can get a sentence out of me. It's, it's, it's over. Why are you looking at me funny? I was doing work and I was, I was, I was talking about the, the QT99 and talking about how accurate the 7548 was. I was like, ah, it's great to see this a thousandth per day. Well, it's not a thousandth per day. It's a hundredth per day. What? And I'm sitting there and I'm talking about it and two people were like, uh, that's hundreds, not thousands. And I'm like, I just don't have a brain anymore. <laughs> What's the best? You just need to put me in a corner booth of a coffee shop downtown with a t-shirt that says, I do not bite. And then I just leave me there. Pick me up on the, pick, drop me off in the morning, pick me up at night. And I'll just sit there and look out the window. Oh God, that's terrible. Why? That's what I'm getting to. No, Ooh, not. look at that. Hey. No, no, no. This is super cool. Hey. Oh, 
war, look at this. That's a wartime World War II, that's a steel penny. Wow. Those are really cool. After the war, the mint in San Francisco had to get rid of, they had a, apparently tons of these things, like literal tons. So what they did is they just loaded them on a barge and took them out of San Francisco Bay, out beyond Ocean Beach, and dumped them into the water. Somewhere out there are huge piles of World War II steel pennies. Can't imagine there's much left of them. But that's one of those interesting things. Hi. What? You know what this door is called? That's called a... Uh, it's not a door. It's a lid. That's the lid. It's the lid for this jar. You no, know, you know what this door is called? Uh, the, stone no. is, the stone is called amethyst. Can you say amethyst? No. You can't what say What color that. is it? You know what kind of store is it? It is a purple rock store. It is a purple. Oh, that's what you made. There's a purple rock store and a trilobite store for all your trilobite needs. Okay, folks, we'll stop wasting your time, but I mean, that's about it. I'll, I'll try to make some time to... <laughs> a couple things. I have that baby, baby turtle. And I've been looking at it and thinking about it, and it's very cool, and I have to do a watch review of it. Scout's Honor, I will do that review. Um, I also want to poke at um, another wacky rebuild this weekend. I'm not quite sure which one I'm going to do, but I have some out, and I'll think about it. That's it. Did you have anything to add? Mm -hmm. Wear your masks. Mm -hmm. Vote. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's it. Say bye-bye, Sebastian. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm. Quick little addendum. Okay, so I finished making that section about putting the crystal in this watch. Um, and so I was digging through my bag of, bag, my drawer of sport divers, and I found this. It's the brown dial variety. So what do you think? Should I redo the black or the brown? I like the brown. I don't think I've ever owned one of the browns. But, but... Going back to what the gentleman was saying about the edges of the plates on the 6000 series on the, on the square or the beveled edge. This is another one. Same model. This one came to me like this. It's all beat up. It's original. So this 6119 UFO is from 1976. And it has a straight text case back. There it is. And I opened this up because I wanted to see the movement. Square edges. So I don't know that there is a correlation or connection between the straight edged and the and the production date. I simply I don't know. So again, if you can clarify that for me about what specifically you mean and what things I should look for. That would be great, because we have this, straight case back, straight edges, horseshoe case back, straight edges. So uh, the, the inclination might be to say, well, you know, how do you know that they're original, and maybe these two things have been jacked, and how can you tell? These watches have not been apart. I've had these in my collection for I don't even know how long. Both of them were unrestored and untouched. But I guess I could start ripping apart a bunch of other watches and we could see what we could do. Because um, that would be a pretty interesting thing to do. But I just thought that was interesting. So straight and horseshoe both have the straight edges. Anyway, so what do you think? Black or brown? I'm actually kind of inclined to think about the brown. I mean, all I'd need to do is find a 6119 movement for this, which I have, and that hadn't handset, which I have. I could have them both. Anyway, whatever.